this concept of seeing things play out. I think that's so, so powerful. And I tend to be a visual person as, as well as kinesthetic. Like it depends on what I'm learning about or what it is that I'm doing. But generally when I'm going to events or planning events, I tend to visualize them out. And I think, okay, if I'm going to this spot, I can sort of see where that location is. And so I did a similar thing where I visualized this location because I knew it and I work very close to that location. And the thing was that for whatever reason on that day, I completely forgot how I had planned it all out. And I found myself relying on the um, GPS and the GPS took me this other way where it now led me into this traffic and then um, it started to pour, uh, raining. And then it was just one thing after another that really just threw me into a bit of a spin. And I sort of found myself just not knowing where I was, losing my bearings and being frustrated because I had planned it all out. And so I only remember that I had planned this out in my head um, as I'm sort of at the end of the trial of trying to get there and, and it's getting closer. I'm like, oh, but I had this whole other plan. Oh no, it's just come to me. And so I think I really appreciate what you've shared in regards to looking at ourselves and paying attention to ourselves and um, being in tune with what we're doing, why we're doing it. And I think when we, myself, when I look back at what happened, I go, okay, what was, why was it that I forgot those things? And perhaps for myself, when I consider my habits and I consider the way that I uh, tend to be, perhaps it is that I'm always trying to do so much. And so there's an overwhelm of information an overwhelm of tasks and lists and never ending um, events to attend or maybe things to reply to. And so I need to take a step back and just have, like you mentioned, those quadrants and really look at them and, and how to best prioritize uh, where my energy and my flow uh, of creativity goes because it cannot be spread across all these different things. You know, life happens, right, for all of us. We've got our family, we've got our work, we've got personal things that we're trying to grow on. And, and I have this constant insatiable desire to grow and to be better and to improve. And um, I think I'm at this point where realizing that I really need to look within has been so powerful because I'm not looking for external things to complete or to add or to um, do anything. I'm sort of turning within and it's it's been both a great process and a frustrating one because this obviously with anything when we're changing at the core of who we are, uh, it tends to be this challenge that can I don't know. It's it's like it's hard to sit with yourself and and look in the mirror and say the things that you've been doing for so long, and to you know the process of maybe forgiving yourself or the process of recognizing that certain set behaviors are not conducive to your way of being or they're not conducive to others, and it's like you have to sit in a, with a mirror in front of you and go, "I'm sorry for behaving the way that I did. I'm sorry for being the way that I was," and that brings that awareness to be like, okay we can reset. Let us look at how we to best present in the world and be aware of what we're putting out there. Um, Cause whether we like it or not, and whether we're aware of it or not, what we put out there is felt and it's, and it's seen, right? And so people don't remember what you say. They don't remember what you did, but they always remember how you made them feel. Um, and so you've made them feel not only by your words, but also through the emotions that you send out. Um, it's your body language. It's, it, you know, there's a, we emit a certain, um, you know, spiritual, if you like, or into the atmosphere, spiritual sensation and with everything that we carry. And I was listening to this, um, Caroline, Dr. Caroline Liff, she talks a lot about the brain and she's an expert in, in, in the brain and neuroscience. And she spoke about how, when we're frustrated and when we're in a negative state of being, like I'm thinking negative thoughts and I'm perceiving all the terrible things that could happen about a situation we're actually emitting toxicity within our own brains. And over time, that toxicity builds up and results in things like cancer or illnesses. Um, and that toxicity doesn't just affect us, it affects those around us because that toxicity now touches other people that in particular we do life with, right? Or we do close relationship with. And so we need to be mindful that it's not just how we're talking. It's not just how we're being, but a large part of what we're sensing. Because sometimes, you know, people talk about masking. You know, you can just pretend you're just going to mask what's going on inside of you. 
Um, and I love the correlation you gave about, you know, children when they do play pretend, for them it's very real. And what we'll notice with that is that children actually are so immersed in it that their bodies and their brains are believing that's reality. Like it's so real for them. Whereas for us, play pretend is like I can at an intellectual level sustain that, but then over time, like I can only go for so long, maybe half an hour to an hour, but I can't pretend forever. Whereas a child, and this is what um, uh, Joe Dispenza also talks about in the book of The Habit of Being Yourself, is that a child can go on and on for days and months being that character they embody the character so easily because they're so open to this other state of being because then they haven't formed those rigid boundaries or habits that set in over time it's just fascinating to consider that we have this ability to uh tune in even at this age and and to by paying attention shift some of those components of our character or behavior or habits that we don't really like um, and I really appreciate how, um, you know, you made the correlation or you spoke about it's the little things, right? It's the little things that compound over time. And so I have to often stop myself and appreciate the little things. I'd be like, you know what? You actually were better than any other time. Like this Saturday, even though, yes, you, you felt a certain way, you actually present a lot better and you got over it a lot sooner. Like, almost straight away, you, you got over it. And then, yeah, there was another thing that upset you, but then you got over that as well. So it didn't linger on for the amount of days that it would normally linger. And so I can see that I've done a lot of progress that over time has compounded and now enables me to see even greater and to do even better, right? Because I'm looking at the little steps I've taken, there should be an appreciation for those because with those little steps is how I'm going to get over the hill. It's not one big leap and I would love one big leap. We all would, but that doesn't often sustain us. It's one big leap in the now, but can we sustain that long-term? And it's in the little changes that allow us to then not only biologically, but physically and mentally sustain the change that's happening, which is um, such great news for us. You know, and even when we talk about the brain and the plasticity that, um, the brain is it capable of the ability to regrow or to you know sever certain neurons and uh, allow the disconnection between certain pathways that maybe we have ingrained over time i just love that i get excited that there is such capacity for us to transcend 